Morning folks, um, I've got a little job to do this morning so I thought I'd include you with it, make a little video of it. Um, got a lump of flint here, it was broken in probably the Neolithic period, found in the forest in Breckland and um, I really like this bit of stone because it feels a bit like you're touching and holding time. So um, I'm going to extract a flake off of there and then make a barbed and tanged arrowhead and it should be a use, useful little video showing you some of the ways that get nice long flakes. So let's um, set up a platform and uh, organise that first. And I'll try and bring you down so you can see all that you need to be watching. So we're going to cast it off of here. And it should be nice and black in the middle. Yeah. So a platform has got to have a nice sort of crescent shape to it, like no bumps sticking out, leaning back at about 30 degrees I guess. Right, so, glass is time so I can see what I'm doing, I'm back down here. I like to get that nice and upright and hold it nice and firm and then give it a good healthy slap. Oh, that's a classic. Oops, look at that boy. That's um, quite a thin flake. <coughs> it is quite thin, look. A little bit curved. So it might be, it's going to be quite a tiny little arrowhead, I guess. Now, tools to do the job. Bronze Age barbed and tanged arrowhead with deep notches in there, right? So we're going to be using a copper tipped flaker because that's what, exactly what they would have done. A little leather pad for the hand, right? Pop that on the leather pad. And then, it's always good to bring um, your hands quite a long way into your body. And then what we'll do is we'll start along this edge, look, and we'll just start pushing little flakes down and away. I can already tell that this is a little bit crumbly, but um, that's okay. Now what you might notice is each time a flake is taken, this line is left straight. And that's because what we do is we take that right from that very corner, look, and that leaves it all looking tidy. So that's a platform that hasn't been abraded, so it actually won't take any force at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll just lean that downwards a little bit, look. And we'll braid that. And then we'll push the first set of flakes out. That's so, there's an angle change that you might want to take notice of now. Before, when we set the platform, we were just pushing from that angle. But now we're going to tilt that round. So it's actually pushing out in front. And then push across. And the flake that flake's gone to there. what we've got is we've got that first little flake set on there look then we can come to meet them from the opposite side that white material is called cortex and um, it's basically transforming itself into um, 
that's a new colour. It's all flint is flint is uh, basically a sponge, so it can um, absorb moisture, and the moisture will carry in with it whatever it's been surrounded by, which in this case was chalk. So it's a bit of a chalky texture. When, t when tools have been made in the past, lithics as we know them, been laying around for a long time, they get this lovely pat patina and um, that's what makes them look so lovely as well. The other thing I didn't mention is the copper tip is nice and sharp. You're going to be needing quite a bit of force. So if you've got something really blunt there, it just means that you've got to find extra power. Which you're already having to put enough in there, so keep that nice and sharp. As you go, just file it and that will be better. Right, so let's see what happens over the back of this now. Then. It is really quite um, a vulnerable material on this side, so there's a chance it might not even happen. Right, this should almost become translucent with that um, patina taken off. I'm not that bothered if I don't get it all off because there's something about it having its time age sort of thing going on that's quite that's quite nice. You get in what you're getting is you're getting a mixture of colour gradients going on. So that is quite a nice effect. Now there's something to show you here, it's quite hard to capture on camera, but this area it's very very flat it doesn't have any ovation to it so it's a really hard thing to flake through so the first thing I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm just going to send a shorter set of flakes to sort of build build a contour into this so to do that I'm just going to reach a bit higher up the stone and push out what really appears to be another platform I've got no intention of getting these flakes a long distance while I'm at this it's probably a good idea to talk to you and um, just kind of say thanks for your uh, continued likes um, messages and comments and shares I appreciate that let's see you know if you're going to be sociable you might as well be sociable right right let's see where we can get these ones to then crumbling away it's a bit see frost will get into these things as well and um, that can be a bit of a destructive agent to your efforts right and then what we'll do is we'll come in from the back as well
whatever it will let me do. And see how it's just snapping away, but that's okay. It's um, got a perfectly square edge here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I call it switch stitching, which is a term that I've made up, where you just keep turning it and going into the very edge of that square section. What I think is important when you're making an arrowhead is not to get tired out with all the effort. Basically, if you look at it like, if you're getting tired out along the way, that means that the very next step that you're doing, um, you can't do it as well as the last one. And you need to be as good with every push as you've ever been. So if it's tiring your hands out, then just give yourself a little break. Once you've done a few arrowheads, you find that you can pretty much soldier through them without any form of fatigue at all, but there you go. So there's a few other things to be said about a barbed and tanged arrow as well. You know, what you when you get into archaeology, what and you uh, see some of the discoveries, it's normally it's quite common to find barbed and tanged arrowheads in burials, and um, a barbed and tanged arrowhead is quite an elaborate little piece of craftsmanship, really. Um, it's beyond what you need to hunt down an animal. Um, so they were quite sort of um, revered as the top of the skill set. So if you're struggling to make them, you might want to give yourself a bit of a break about that because um, it wasn't everybody that was making them in the past. And when you've got good ones, you've got really good ones. Um, you can look up um, either the Amesbury Archer. His were sort of 17 arrowheads, barbed and tanged. Sort of mixture of um, standards in there. Possible that different people would contribute to them. But there was a burial over in um, France as well, where 40 arrowheads were found. And they were... Deeply, deeply notched and um, made by a highly skilled flint knapper. Um, but some of the ancient burials are um, incredible. And uh, in the not too distant future, one of the things I'll be doing is taking you on a journey that I'm going on to um, some of the archaeological sites that have been inspiring me over the years. And then we'll go and see what's there. And I'll take you along for the ride. There's some places you might never get to. Just getting this, see if I can get a second wave of flakes out over this. We'll go a bit further. from this other side. So you don't always get a set of flakes to the middle on the first run. You might have to do these edges two or three times. But 
but once the arrowhead's finished, it's not the sort of stuff you can tell because it's work that's gone in but is now on the floor around you. that's got a nice covering on there and this has got that those lovely milky shades of sort of whitey blue so I'm just going to tidy up this little edge now Right, so we've got that far, um, and what I'm going to do now, hopefully in here somewhere, I've got one that's been kind of hammered out flat, might have a better one than that actually. And um, this will make nice and sharp. So that's nice and sharp, look. And um, we'll go back down here and I'll show you how I'll notch. So, what we're going to do is sort of, these are a bit wider than the notch itself. Now, when we go in, what we've got to do is we're going to do the inside one first, then step out to the outside one. So we're going inside, outside. And the reason you do that is because it means you're going to get less pressure. This has got to go over a bit. On the actual tang itself, and less likely to um, go casting it to the very floor. It's not uncommon to break them in half accidentally. And if that happens, it happens. So, there we go, one little barbed and tanged arrowhead, uh, 19 minutes exactly. So, um, as I was saying, I will be going on a journey shortly of uh, some nice archaeological sites, and I want to take you guys along on that journey and um, enjoy it. And uh, I might even learn if I can play this along the way as well. I've just got myself this. See what I mean? Need a little bit of practice. I'll get back to you with that one. Alright, have a nice day. Hope you enjoyed the uh, movie. Cheers.